Hiya, this is Kevin from MoneyBase, and I want to show you how we can make an admin panel for a MySQL database, allowing our users to have full create, read, and update, delete functionality for related tables within our database. Let's dive in. My database represents an inventory for some stock. In my inventory, I link my product ID to a warehouse and how many of that product are there. In my products table, I've got a description and product name and a category. In my shipments table, I've got where the product's being shipped from and to, who supplied it, the dates, the expected arrival, and the quantity that's being sent. In the suppliers, I've got the details about the supplier. And in the warehouses, I've got details about where each of these warehouses are located. What I'd like to do is expose that data to my users so that it can actually be used to track and to make decisions rather than just sitting in my database in a silo which is untouched. So from the BuddyBase panel, I'm going to create a new application. I'll click on Start from Scratch, and I'll name my app MySQL Inventory App. I don't need the sample data, so I'll uncheck this box, and I'll create the app. Once that's created, I'll be asked what data source I'd like to add. And I want to add a MySQL relational database. So I'll click here, scroll down and click continue. I now need to log into my database. I'm using Docker and a local instance of MySQL. So I'll need to put a host.docker.internal here. The database I want to connect to is called supply underscore chain. And I'll click save and fetch tables. I can click through my tables and I can see each of the data are ready to go. Let's head over to the design section, click on add screen, and we'll click on list view, which allows us to automatically generate CRUD screens for each of the tables that we select. I'm going to select all of these tables and confirm. I then get the opportunity to decide on the access level for each of these screens. This can be changed later and defaults to basic but I've got the choice to make it public, which won't require any kind of authentication, or power or admin, which are elevated roles that you've got control of to decide who has access to what. If you'd like to partition your data and allow it to be accessible by some users, not others, this is how you would make that change using the access level. I'll click on done, and that'll go ahead and it'll generate this list of screens, shipments, products, suppliers, and warehouses. These have the routes where they'll be identified. We can click between them and we click on preview up here to show the application in action. Along the top, I've got links to my particular tables. So I'll click on products. And this tells me the product name, the description and the category. If I click on one of these, I get a popover, which allows me to see the products again. And I can change it. Cement mixer maybe instead of cement. And that will update in my UI and it will also update on my database. Let's change it back again. I can create new products by typing in the product name. Weed killer kills weeds. And I'll put in the gardening category and I'll save. I'll scroll through and I can see that that's now on page two. It now exists in my database. So I can create new data. I can read it and I can update it. What about delete? To do that, I'll go back to my table, my products table. I'll click on it, and if I scroll down, I can click on Show Delete here. Click that, go back to my panel, and refresh the page. Now when I click on a row, I've got the option to delete it. I'm pressing Delete, I'll get a confirmation screen, I'll confirm, and we no longer sell cement now. Uh-oh. We can decide not to allow our users to delete, or only allow them to delete on particular screens. That level of granularity is completely at your discretion. You can decide what you want your users to be able to do and allow them to be able to do it. Let's look at the inventory. The inventory at the moment shows the product ID, the warehouse ID, and the quantity. What would be more helpful is that instead of showing the product ID, that instead we showed the product name. And instead of showing the warehouse ID, we want to see the warehouse name. To do that, we'll need to tell BuddyBase about the relationships that exist within our data. So let's go back to our 
data tab and I'll click on products and I will define a relationship. It's a one-to-many relationship because one product can exist in many inventory list items. So I'll say, I want to link the product ID to the inventory using the product ID key that's on there. BuddyBase will then create a products table in the inventory and an inventory table in the product. So I'll save this and I'll see now it says inventory eight, inventory one and one, inventory seven. And if I go back to my inventory now, I can see I get the product name, drill, drill, hammer, hammer, safety helmet, all the rest of it. The other piece of information that the inventory table has is the warehouse. And again, they're being identified by their ID and not by any other information. So I'll go to warehouses. I will define a relationship. It'll be a one-to-many because one warehouse can have many inventory items in it. It'll, I'll connect the warehouse ID to the inventory table using the warehouse ID and those columns will be created. Back to my inventory now, I can see the warehouse names are being used. Now the first column is the column that will be used to identify this particular piece of data. And at the moment, this inventory table is actually being identified by the product ID. So if I look across, I can see actually probably the most useful thing to identify each of these is the inventory ID. So I'll click on the dot here and I'll click use this display column. Now I have the inventory ID, the products, the warehouses, but I still have this product ID and warehouse ID, which I don't really need anymore because I want the selector to be in charge. So I'll hide those as well. Now on my back end, I've got a really helpful table. Now I've got an inventory ID, products, warehouses, and quantity. Let's see what this looks like on the front end now. So I'll go to preview, I'll click on inventory, and it has a lot of that same detail. We've got the quantity, the products, and the warehouses. And if we click into one of them, we can change which warehouse and which quantity, and that will be updated. But we do have this product ID and warehouse ID being displayed over here. I'd rather not see those. So let's go fix that. In my design tab, I want to be in my inventory screen. And I want to re reorder these really. I'd like product, warehouse, quantity in that order. And I don't want to see the product ID and the warehouse ID at all. So I'll click on configure columns here on the right. And by default, it will add all the columns. So I'll need to do that as well. I'll click add all columns. And then I'll remove the ones I don't want, product ID and warehouse ID. And I'll reorder them using this little handle on the left hand side. So I want products, then warehouses, then quantity, and I'll save. Now I'll go back and refresh my page. And that looks much better now. I've got my inventory and I'll create a new item. Now with the create new here, I've got that same problem. I've got the product ID here and I have the warehouse ID. I don't want either of those in this create new form. So let's go and change that as well. So clicking on my table, I'll scroll down because now I'm looking at the on row click, the show side panels detail. I want to configure the fields here. The same process, I'll add all the columns, remove the ones I don't want, and put them in the order I'd like, products, warehouses, and actually I want to say product, warehouse and quantity. I'll go back to my application, refresh the page, and now I'll create new and it looks much better now. I want to say I've got a hammer in warehouse 100 and I've got 2000 of them, just to make it easier to find. Great, now it's on this table, it's somewhere on this paginated table. If I click on quantity, I can see here, 2000, warehouse 100, and our hammer. This pagination is automatically added. We have eight records per page and we are paginating between them. If that's not what you want, you can change that. We can see a scroll limit set to here to eight. We could change that to be 10. Or we could just turn off pagination altogether. And if we do that, we'll just have the first 10 records and no way to get to the others. It's not ideal. Let's put it back on again. 
There are other options that we have available here as well. We can choose an automatic sort. We can decide how we want to sort and set the size. By default, it's set to medium. We can set the large, so it's kind of more bold. All of these tables are responsive and will look good on whatever device you have. Here I have on a desktop. This is what it might look like on an iPhone, on an iPad, and even on a Samsung Galaxy. Rather than creating these apps to just sit on computers, they can be in the hands of your colleagues on the shop floor straight away. Let's tidy up these links. At the moment, this, do this doesn't make a lot of sense, the order they're in. So how do we fix that? I'll go back to my panel. I'll click on the navigation on the left-hand side, and I'll click on configure links. I don't really need this home page, so I'll get rid of that. I probably want the products first, then maybe the inventory, warehouses, suppliers, shipments. Maybe shipments is a bit higher. I'll make some decisions about that. And here I can decide on the role I would like for each screen. I'll save that. And then that will be updated in my panel here. If it's on a smaller screen, if it's a bigger screen, then they'll be spread up along the top. I have other options here as well. I can decide if I want to read a really small kind of header, can make it really big. By default, it uses the company logo that you've set. Ours is set to BuddyBase. You can add a logo URL if this is different per application, or in the main portal, you can update your logo for all of your app applications. Alternatively, you can just get rid of it. We can also set the background color and the text color. We also use these buttons along the top to see what our application would look like. This is it, what it looked like on a tablet and on a phone. Tablet, desktop, and phone. So as you're designing your application, you can be thinking responsibly from the get-go. There are a number of themes that we can set from midnight, quite a dark, to lightest, quite a light, and some in between. Equally, we can make our buttons round or not round and change their colors. And then we're back into our screens and components, the main building blocks of our application. I'm going to finish this off by deleting this home page altogether and setting my products page as the home page, set as home screen. I'll hit preview. I'll land on my product page where I have complete CRUD functionality, creating, reading, updating, and deleting. And I can nip between my other things, my inventory, my warehouses, my shipments, and my suppliers. My shipments, again, have relational data going on here that I'll need to configure. Let's do that. Back on my data tab, I'll click on shipments. And I'll notice we have a source warehouse and a destination warehouse and a supplier. I three IDs that we want to link. So two suppliers first. Suppliers, find relationship. Supplier ID to our shipments table through the supplier ID. And we'll save. Then from warehouses, I've got two relationships to set up here. I've got the warehouse ID to the shipments to the source warehouse. I'll say that source warehouse, shipment source, and I'll save. And equally, I want the warehouse ID to the shipments table to the destination warehouse. And I want that to be warehouse destination and shipment destination. And I'll save. Now in my shipments table, again, I can see supplier, source warehouse, warehouse destination. The current name is being based on the product ID rather than the shipment ID, so I'll fix that. Shipment ID should be the name, so I'll click on the three dots and use this display column. And I'll hide the source warehouse ID, the destination warehouse ID, and the supplier ID. I've got one more, the product ID, so let's go and update that. So products, define relationship, one to many, product ID to the shipments, using the product ID, and I'll save. And same idea, I'd like my, I can drag and drop these, so I'll bring product over to maybe near the start. I've got my product being supplied, it started at Warehouse 101, it ended up at Warehouse 102, when it was shipped, when we expected it to arrive, when it actually arrived, and the quantity. The last thing we'll do then is we'll update our front end. In our design, we'll go to our shipment screen. We want to update these columns. So configure the columns, 
We'll add them all. And we'll get rid of the ID ones. Bye bye ID. Bye bye this ID and this one and this one. We'll put the product out front, where it's being shipped from, where it's being shipped to, when it was shipped, when we expect it to arrive, when it actually arrived, and maybe suppliers to be slightly farther up as well. Let's save that. That feels like a much more useful table. And then we'll want to update our update form as well. So we'll go to scroll down and we'll configure fields. And we'll get rid of all the IDs, product ID, source ID, destination ID, and supplier ID. And we'll rearrange these to make sense. So product will move to the top, supplier, quantity, source, destination, shipment date and expected arrival. Let's save and let's view that in the front end. So this table it looks really useful. I can click on this and I say, oh, this says the expected arrival date was here. The actual arrival was the 9th. Actually, it didn't arrive to the 11th. Let's update that and save. Okay. And then we can create a new row. We can say we've got a hammer, which is being supplied by GearGo, and we've got 100 of those. Um, it's going from warehouse 100 to warehouse 606. And I'm going to ship it today, which is the 24th of May. And I'll save that. If I sort these by date, I'll be able to see here's the one I just entered, the 24th of May. So we now have a graphical user interface, a web application that's responsive, that can be used on tablets, mobile phones, or desktop computers, that exposes the data that was just existing in our SQL database. It's ready for new records to be created, current records to be read and updated and deleted. And you're in complete control over who can do what. How are you going to help your data be more actionable with BuddyBase?